We live in what could be called the second philanthropic age, not since the Rockefellers and the Carnegies have so many wealthy Americans given away so much. This past summer, Warren Buffett and Bill and Melinda Gates announced their idea of the Giving Pledge. They're asking America's billionaires to join them and make a moral pledge to give at least half their wealth away. That would add up to about $600 billion. In Foreign Policy Magazine's special edition out tomorrow, of the top 100 global thinkers, Warren Buffett and Bill Gates are number one for stepping up when many nations are faltering. Indeed, Buffett, the Gateses, and Ted Turner, who has also made the pledge, have given their billions to fixing some of the world's most vexing problems. I traveled to Omaha, Seattle, and New York to talk to each of them and find out what drives them and how they see the future of America and the world. But we began with the issue that will dominate the debate here in Washington when Congress returns this week, and that is tax cuts. There's been this increasing disparity uh, between the rich and the poor, and we found out that a rising tide just lifted all yachts, not all boats. <laughs> Warren Buffett has been practically begging the country, begging Congress to tax him more. In fact, many of the richest Americans, like Buffett, Bill and Melinda Gates, and Ted Turner, say that they should pay higher tax. The rich are always going to say that, you know, that, just give us more money and we'll go out and spend more and then it'll all trickle down to the rest of you. But that has not worked the last uh, 10 years and, and uh, I hope the American public is catching on. The debate over whether the rich should pay more taxes takes place outside Washington, D.C. as well. In Washington State, for instance, where Bill Gates Sr. has been passionately championing a new tax on the rich. People say Initiative 1098 is about soaking the rich. Washington is one of seven states with no state income tax. Vote yes on 1098. Proposition 1098 uh, that was in Washington state to try to bring a wealth tax yeah. uh, s championed by Bill Gates Sr., right. supported by Bill Gates, uh, it failed. Right. Got beat pretty badly, but I really admire Bill Sr. for what he did on this. I mean, there's a guy that's going out and trying to do something for his state, and they unfortunately lost. Uh, what do you say, though, to the executives? Um, one apparently was even a Microsoft executive who spent a lot of money trying to defeat that. Yeah, well, <laughs> They're not alone in those. Look at who fights in terms of the estate tax and in terms of higher tax rates. That's, that's what K Street's all about in Washington. And, and unfortunately, the, the, uh, politics is a game of, of push and pull, and you get to push with money. Are you disappointed that it got defeated? I voted yes, and uh, I was hoping that it would pass. But that's, that's done now. If people aren't going to pay for the services that they need, how are those services going to get funded, do you think? Well, and taxes and spending have to match each other in the long run. There's many ways to tax. There's many ways to spend. That's all up to the voters. Uh, they, you know, some states you rely on your legislators to do that. Some you have lots of referendums. Do you agree with the former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan that all Bush-era tax cuts should come to an end? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I, I think they're actually, you might extend them further for the, uh, the lower class, middle class, maybe upper middle class. And I, But I think that... that uh, that you should raise taxes on the very rich. I lived in periods where capital gains taxes were 39.6% when earned income taxes were 70% and our economy did just fine. Why do you think there isn't more of that kind of debate? I think that it hasn't been to the interests of the people in Washington to get as riled up about that as they get riled up about other things. You know, we, we're going to raise $2.2 trillion this year or something like that. $900 billion will come from individual income taxes. $900 billion will come from payroll taxes. So the payroll taxes become 40% of our total revenue, just like the income tax. And people that talk about how the rich pay their share and all that sort of thing, they totally ignore the payroll tax. Uh, you know, I did this little survey in my office uh, a few years ago, and there were 16 people responded, and I had the lowest tax rate of the 16. I didn't have any tax shelters, I didn't have any tax planner. It was all courtesy of the U.S. Congress. I mean, I, they, they did my tax planning for me. And uh, literally, the average for the office, counting payroll taxes, was 32 percent, and mine was 16 and a fraction percent. Their rationale is that by giving you a tax break, so to speak, which is what yeah. it amounts to, you help all the others, that it trickles down. Yeah, well, all I can say is it hasn't trickled. <laughs> you know, a, a, as I said, a rising tide has lifted all yachts, but the rowboats have been left behind. I still pay quite a bit of taxes, but not as 
not as much as I would if I didn't give so much money away. I get a lot of deductions. So what do you think about the prospects of cutting Social Security and means testing well, I don't for like, people like I you? I don't like it. I paid, I paid for Social Security. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's my own money I'm getting back, in my opinion. I think, I think Social Security, once you, since you paid for it, it's yours, and you're just entitled to get it. But each of these multi-billionaires sees needs that are not met. Thus, they're called to others like them to join the giving pledge. My wealth has come from a combination of living, living in America, some lucky genes, and compound interest. Both my children and I won what I call the ovarian lottery. Warren Buffett, who is CEO of Berkshire Hathaway and one of the world's richest men, has pledged to give away 99% of his fortune. Today, that's worth $50 billion. Was it difficult at first to sort of go from making that money to give it away? No, it, it was not difficult to make the decision. My wife and I made the decision back when we were in our 20s that we were going to do it. The question was how to do it. And it's much easier to make it than it is to give it away intelligently. We have been blessed with good fortune beyond our wildest expectations, and we are profoundly grateful. But just as these gifts are great, so we feel a great responsibility to use them well. Bill Gates, founder of Microsoft, is also giving away his money and applying his innovative smarts to trying to solve some of the world's biggest problems. Along with his wife, Melinda, they've created the largest private foundation in the world with $35 billion in assets, which they're focusing on improving global health and on improving education here in the United States. What was the personal mental shift between making all that money and then deciding to give it away? I think that's an important thing to understand about Bill and me, which is we knew, even during the time we were engaged, we talked about the fact that this wealth would go back to society. That was a given between us, because we both grew up in families where volunteerism was really important, giving back was really important. Bill had thought it was gonna be later in his career, in his 60s, but once we started getting going in a small way, it builds on itself. I don't measure success in numbers, but I consider my contribution of more than $1.3 billion to various causes over the years to be one of my proudest accomplishments and the best investment I've ever made. Ted Turner, Captain Courageous, who won America's Cup, media mogul who revolutionized television news with CNN, who married a movie star and was involved in the biggest media merger ever, AOL, together with Time Warner. When he was surprisingly fired from that venture, he reinvented himself with a second career as philanthropist. And in 1997, he stunned the world with one of the largest donations in history, $1 billion to create the United Nations Foundation. Was it scary to give a third of your wealth away? It is scary because everybody's always afraid that they're gonna go broke. Nevertheless, these business giants are not afraid to give back in a big way. I've got everything I possibly need. I've never given up a meal, a movie, a, a vacation trip, anything in my life. And, and I've got all this huge surplus. I've got a whole bunch of what I call claim checks on society, little stock certificates. They sit in a box. They've been there for 40 years. They, they can't do anything for me. They can do a lot for other people if intelligently used. You said you won the ovarian lottery. Is that because of uh, opportunity? Was it because of smarts? It was being born in America in 1930. I was born in the right country at the right time. Bill Gates has always told me if, if I'd been born you know, many thousands of years ago, or uh, I'd have been some animal's lunch because I, I can't run very fast and I can't climb trees and some animal will be chasing me and I say, well, I allocate capital. <laughs> the animal will say, those are the guys that taste the best, you know. So, and, I mean, here I am, you know. And how did you get your head around not giving it all to your children? Well, I, I just think the idea of dynastic wealth is kind of crazy. The idea that you should be able to do nothing in this world you know, for the rest of your life and your children and your grandchildren just because you pick the right womb does not really seem to me very American. If you're not giving up anything, are you a do-gooder? Are you a philanthropist? I'm, I'm, I'm somebody doing something that's very logical to me, and I consider the real philanthropist the person who sticks five dollars in a collection plate this Sunday and can't go to a movie because of it. Plenty of people do that. They actually give up an extra toy for their kids at Christmas uh, by giving that five or ten dollars. I consider somebody like my sister who spends hours every day working to help other people. They're giving away time, which is precious. And yet you have called it a moral obligation. Well, it's, it's, it's certainly an internal obligation. I mean, I, I, uh, 
I don't want to preach morality to other people, but it's, I don't see any other ch choice that makes any sense. I mean, I, I could build a pyramid to myself and I could, I could kill tourism in, in Egypt, you know, if I spent the whole 40 or 50 billion on building the greatest tomb ever, you know, and people come for a couple hundred years. But I think that's kind of crazy. So would you say you're egoless? No, I'm not egoless. I, I take great pride in you know, what Berkshire Hathaway does if we do well. And uh, I mean, I, I like accomplishing things. And if I accomplish them, I like other people uh, acknowledging that. So um, no, I, I, I've got plenty of ego. But I don't believe in spending money that doesn't do anything for me when it will do something for somebody else. Buffett is giving more than 15% of his money to foundations started by his three children and his late wife, Susan. They tackle issues like the environment, family planning, education, and human rights. I've told them uh, if they're a, they're a failure if they don't have any failures, because if they just do easy things, you know anybody can do those. You know, they're supposed to t tackle tough, important problems, and and to some extent, ones where funding is otherwise not available. That's where you make a difference.